Okay, our next presenter is Nish Etige from Boston University. Nish's uh, presentation is titled Influence of Large Scale Kuroshio Extension Variability on the Pacific Decadal. Okay. I'm going to start that again. Nish's title of his presentation is Influence of Large Scale Kuroshio. I think I said that right. Extension variability of the Pacific, Pacific Decadal Procession and the high resolution version of the Community Earth System Model or CDSM. P.S. Nisha is going to be a daddy. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. All right. Uh, so, hi all. Uh, I'm Nisha Tege. I'm uh, from Boston University. Department of Earth and Environment. I'm a doctoral candidate over there. And uh, today I will be presenting my work on influence of large scale Kuroshio extension variability on the Pacific Decadal Precession in the high resolution version of the Community Earth System model. Uh, yeah, I know it's a handful, but uh, I will just let you know what's Kuroshio, uh, Kuroshio extension and Pacific Decadal Precession uh, in the background. So, what you're seeing in the picture is um, a map of uh, surface ocean currents in the world. and uh, Oh, uh, if I use my pointer, yeah, I can use the pointer. So <clears throat> you can see, uh, so these ocean currents are wind-driven and uh, on the surface, like, uh, and uh, my uh, focus area is on the Kuroshio uh, uh, re region or the North Pacific Ocean, uh, ocean's western boundary region, where we have this particular current called Kuroshio current, and that, uh, and at the extratropics, like, uh, uh, before the extratropics, uh, it moves to, uh, it uh, moves towards the uh, Central Pacific Ocean as an extension where we call this the Kuroshio extension, which is, which is the ocean current. And uh, so when it comes to Kuroshio extension, uh, as I said, it is the eastward, uh, eastward extension of this uh, subtropical gyre. And uh, this Kuroshio ex what this Kuroshio extension do is like it brings a lot of warm water from the, uh, from the equatorial region uh, to the northern regions. And while bringing this, uh, this has shown a periodicity, a quasi decadal periodicity in, uh, in terms of sea surface height and sea surface temperature. So that is the, that is the basic overview on, uh, on Kuroshio extension. And then moving from the Kuroshio extension, like moving from the North Pacific Ocean to the North Pacific atmosphere, uh, in the North Pacific um, atmospheric, uh, atmosphere, uh, People have see, seen a phenomenon called Pacific Decadal Precession, another term which was in my title. And uh, so this Pacific Decadal Precession is a 10-year counterclockwise progression of an atmospheric pressure dipole, which is, uh, which is a high pressure pattern and a low pressure pattern, as you see in the picture. And like what happens with this pattern over the years is this uh, progresses, this, uh, this circulates among each other. Uh, and and uh, as you can see, uh, it clearly shows a north-south dipole pattern uh, at one phase, which we call the north-south teleconnection phase, and an east-west teleconnection phase at one point. And these uh, different phases uh, of uh, different phases of Pacific Decadal Precession, or PDP, has been linked into changes in environment, such as marine heat waves in North Pacific, cold air outbreaks in the eastern United States drought conditions in North America, terrestrial heat waves over the Western United States, uh, and much more. So, <clears throat> so as I said, Kuroshio have a decadal variability. And Pacific decadal precession, as its name says, has a decadal variability. So people have asked the question before uh, whether Kuroshio have to do something uh, with PDP, because they are both in the same uh, uh, oceanic basin or atmospheric region. So in order to answer that question, um, my advisor, Bruce Anderson, have um, looked into uh, what kind of, uh, what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, cause effect Kuroshio and PDP have. In his research, he has found that PDP both forces and responds to the variability in the Kuroshio extension, which sets a feedback loop. So for an example, as you can see here, the heat fluxes uh, of Kuroshio sets up the PDP, uh, PDP uh, sets up PDP pattern, and later on, uh, the resulting uh, the uh, westward, westward propagation of these pressure patterns and the resulting uh, resulting wind stress anomalies uh, supports a baroclinic Rossby wave, which uh, which propagates westward and like uh, modifies the Kuroshio's heat flux. 
So it keeps happening in a 10 year period. So this is the basic of my doctoral work. And uh, for that, I'd like to, uh, to further dig into the teleconnection stage, uh, I wanted to answer the question like what kind of variability of Kuroshio sets up the PD, uh, sets up the north uh, sets up the or modifies the PDP or causes the PDP in the uh, in the North Pacific region. So, so based on that background, uh, my three chapters of my doctoral dissertation has been uh, uh, um, has been um, uh, created, and these are my three research questions that I try to answer in my doctoral dissertation chapters. So my first question I try to answer is what scale of Kuroshio extension variability influences uh, the downstream atmosphere that causes the Pacific decadal precession? And while, while looking into my first, uh, first chapter, we saw some kind of a link between, between Kuroshio extension and marine heat waves. So my second question I tried to answer was, what is the influence of Kuroshio extension variations on marine environmental extremes in the Northeast Pacific Ocean? And then my third question, I will talk more about that question, but the third question is, how does the Kuroshio extensions influence on the North Pacific atmosphere and marine environments change as the global climate, global, global climate changes, my apologies. All right, so uh, I will give you uh, a brief overview of uh, how I answered my first question and second question before going to the third question. Uh, so to answer the first question, what scale of Kuroshio extension variability influences uh, the influences the PDP or North Pacific atmosphere. What we did was like we used reanalysis data uh, from uh, OSTIA and no IRSST as well as ERA5 uh, for atmospheric uh, data and, and uh, in, uh, inset and car reanalysis data. So all these are reanalysis data. And uh, so, what, uh, so in that work, we found that uh, the non dominant mode or the second mode of large scale Kuroshio variation extension sets up a meridional SST gradient, as you can see here. And that this meridional SST gradient supports ocean heat fluxes, supporting a north-south dipole-like pattern, which is similar to PDP. And later on, this pressure, uh, the modifications done, uh, said, uh, done to the straight, uh, done to the jet, straight, jet and uh, the sonar propagation of stationary wave energy, this dipole supports another pressure monopole downstream, which you can see here barely and which, is the, uh, which supports the east-west phase of the PDP, or Pacific Decadal Precession. All right, so that is a basic understanding of my research, first research question. And also, trying to answer the second research question, we have seen that that large-scale variability of Kuroshio also supports, um, uh, supports, uh, supports sea surface temperature anomalies in the, uh, the Gulf of Alaska region in the Northeast Pacific, which is similar to the recent, uh, recent uh, marine heat wave event that we, uh, that we observed in two, year 2014 and 2015, which we call the blob. And uh, so this is a basic overview of, uh, uh, overview of my second research question. So when it comes to these two research question, uh, questions that I tried to answer, an ob obvious question in the present world, which we all talk about this climate change and uh, uh, emissions and all these climate, different climate change scenarios, uh, the obvious question that we have now is, how does this Kuroshio extensions influence on the North Pacific atmosphere and marine environments change as the global climate changes? So this summer at ENCA, uh, with my uh, mentor, uh, Dr. Annalena Depemaya, uh, we tried to uh, lay our groundwork uh, like to start, this, uh, start uh, answering this question. So uh, for that, we, uh, we used high-resolution CESM data uh, we looked into two outputs, a control output where there's no forcing, uh, and a historic output, which runs from 1878 to 2007, uh, uh, to, uh, to see to, or to determine how these mentioned association that we have uh, seen using reanalysis data is present, or whether they are present or not in the, in the, uh, in the Kuroshio extension and not Pacific, not, uh, uh, present or not in these uh, models. Uh, when it comes to Kuroshio extension and North Pacific atmosphere uh, links. So uh, basically, uh, the data have a resolution of uh, zero, uh, one fourth of a degree in the atmosphere and 0.1 degree of the ocean. And uh, let me uh, take you all through the methodology that we used. Uh, so uh, what we did was like we took the PI control and historic output 
And then uh, the high-risk uh, high CSMSST was low-pass filtered because we already know the large-scale variability is the reason for these uh, PDP-like patterns in the North, uh, North Pacific atmosphere. And then we subset the corrosion extension re region. We conducted an EOF analysis, took the second EOF because it is a non-dominant EOF uh, in the KA index, and we regressed uh, the peer control and hist historic-related atmospheric diagnostics as well as ocean diagnostics onto the uh, Kuroshio extension index. So, and so then this is what we got. So uh, with regards to the K indices, so these are the two K indices that we produce or the Kuroshio extension indices that we produced in the PI control and the historic output. And uh, as you can see, these two EOF patterns also have a similar pattern of the meridional uh, gradient or tem meridional temperature gradient in both uh, PI control and the historic uh, historic output. So, um, all right. So then, once we regressed the ocean and atmospheric atmospheric uh, diagnostics, uh, we first regressed the sea surface temperature, as you can see here. And uh, and you, uh, I'm just keeping this um, pre analysis uh, pre analysis output for uh, sea surface temperature here, so you so we can compare. As you can see. Um, um, in both historic and PI control uh, CSM outputs, uh, we see the meridional gradient, even though there are slight differences in the PI control and the historic output, but uh, we see the meridional gradient, which supports, uh, which supports the north-south pressure dipole pattern. And uh, when it comes to the low, uh, low atmosphere, or 850 hectopascal heights, uh, we see some kind of uh, dipole, but uh, the um, southern portion is a bit weak in the PI control, but when it comes to historic runs, we see the dipole as well as the downstream high pressure pattern. And uh, then this is the upper atmosphere because the response is, response is baroclinic equivalent, where the, uh, we see the same, uh, same pattern as, uh, as we observed in the reanalysis data. Moving forward, uh, so we, uh, for, we further looked into uh, surface heat fluxes, how, uh, uh, how the Kuroshio extension uh, induces surface heat, heat fluxes. Uh, here the shading is negative, uh, sorry, positive downward, where that means like a blue color means uh, uh, heat to the atmosphere. So supporting heat to the atmosphere supports always a high pressure system and vice versa. And then uh, what we have seen in our analysis data is like this uh, dipole pattern uh, sets up a straight jet and like blocks uh, when it comes when it comes to reanalysis it blocks the northward heat transport. So if you take a look at the meridional heat transport or the northward heat tra heat transport, it blocks the no uh, meridional heat heat transport in this region, supporting the low pressure system. And also when it comes to the uh, downstream. Uh, it supports a northward meridional heat transport, uh, which supports a high pressure system. But unfortunately, this is still not co locates very well with the high pressure system. But uh, this is a thing uh, that we further need to study. All right. So if we summarize my work, uh, summarize my presentation, what we have seen is large scale variations of the crucial extension causes pressure patterns over the North Pacific and North America. These patterns are north, south, and east, west, east, west phases of the Pacific decadal precession. Also, there is a link between the Kuroshio extension variations and marine heat waves in the northeast Pacific. These causal links were observed in ocean and atmospheric reanalysis. And what we did here at NGA was we conducted initial investigations to determine whether these links are present in the high resolution CESM model outputs. And then, uh, so we, uh, upon that uh, work, we have seen that K equals atmospheric dipole patterns observed in the reanalysis are also present in the high risk CSM, PI control, and historic outputs. So, uh, why this is very important? Because in the future, we are going to continue this work to investigate how the future of KE and PDP relationship, uh, um, what happens to this relationship in a changing climate, and then. We will also investigate the crucial extension and marine heat wave causality in a changing climate. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, my uh, mentor, Dr. Annalena Defermeyer. I think I, okay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and then um, uh, my uh, my doctoral advisor, Professor Bruce G. Anderson from Boston University, and uh, Dr. Fred uh, Castricio, Dr. Hu Kim, and Dr. Justine Small at NCA, uh, who support who provided us data and like supported uh, different insights and feedbacks on this feedback on this work at the Ocean Section of Climate and Global Dynamics Lab of NCA and uh, for NCA CISL for high performance computing support and Jerry Sakoni for all the support uh, he provided um, while uh, doing an internship with a, a different time uh, of my life. And uh, for Alia and Ben uh, for all the support and my Nessie colleagues and also my life, uh, my lo loving wife Manu uh, for supporting me uh, while expecting our first child. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. Hi, great talk. Really important work. Um, two questions. I'm not an atmospheric scientist, but I'm a machine learning person. How do you establish causality at a high level for systems like these? Yeah, and actually. Oh, yeah. I'll ask my second question later. Okay, uh, so it's, that's a great question. So I haven't uh, shown this. Uh, so basically, uh, we, uh, we did. Uh, let me go back. Okay. Where it is. Okay. So in this work, like uh, basically, we used uh, the atmospheric dynamics, like to see, like uh, if, okay. So uh, this is not the only uh, like uh, temper uh, sea surface temperature and the geopotential height are not the only dynamics that we looked into. So like we looked into multiple dynamics, such as like northward heat transport, uh, heat fluxes, as well as uh, stationary. Uh, uh, meridional, uh, meridional stationary wave energy. So when we do that, like uh, the causality, uh, we establish the causality in two ways. First thing is like we did uh, lag regressions, where when we do a lag regression, we see the like where we see, where we we were able to tell the Kuroshio causes the atmospheric di diagnostics. And at the same time, also uh, in in our um, in our original work on uh, answering the research question one, uh, we used causality analysis, uh, particularly uh, analysis called Granger causality analysis, where we uh, where we generated a monopole index, especially for the downstream patterns, and then like uh, we uh, we conducted that analysis to see which region of the sea surface temperatures in the ocean. Uh, causes uh, this monopole index. So we were we found that it is the Kuroshio region. Okay. So second question: When you say regressions, that means you're like rolling PDE systems forwards and backwards, kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nish, for this presentation. I'm curious. I don't know if you've looked at all at other like oscillations, like. Specifically, the one that came to mind was like the Pacific North America, the PNA. I know it oscillates on a little bit of a smaller time scale, but I'm just curious if you've looked at that at all or thought about that. That's a great question. Uh, even Anna had that question when I started with her. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so basically, uh, when it comes to PDP, uh, I, I think I forgot, I missed telling that. So this north-south teleconnection teleconnec phase is mapped onto North Pacific Oscillation. And this east-west east -west teleconnection phase is mapped onto circumglobal teleconnection pattern, which is kind of like meridional, uh, sorry, zonal propagation of waves. Uh, but uh, when it, uh, but in the uh, in the case of uh, PDO, like things like Pacific decadal, decadal oscillation uh, and the uh, and, and so we have taken these indices and like we have uh, tried uh, doing lead lag correlations with this to see if there is some kind of uh, link with this Kuroshio variability. But we haven't found uh, we haven't uh, we, we haven't seen any strong correlation. So uh, we think like uh, this Kuroshio, uh, Kuroshio's variability is a variability which occurs uh, by itself instead of uh, forcing from uh, and so OPD. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Great work. I Thank just you. have a very generic question. I'm wondering um, if you have any thoughts on how this Kuroshio extension would change in the changing climate now that that's going to be your next step. That's a great question. Uh, work have uh, uh, there. There have been like several work. Like I think like there are multiple schools of thought. Like just like what happens to AMOC, uh, Atlantic Meridional multi uh, Meridional Overturning Circulation. For Croatia also like uh, there there are studies that which says 
Uh, Crucio can weaken, uh, particularly, or strengthen, uh, but depending on the Crucio's variability itself. Um, so that is uh, that is uh, uh, that is why we should take uh, we, we should uh, look into like uh, different cl climate models to see uh, how this Crucio variability will change. But like basically, work has been done and like seen there are multiple uh, ideas like telling it can can weaken in terms of the flu or it can strengthen in terms of the meridional gradient. Uh, great talk, Nish. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what do you have looked at the differences in the PI control and the historical run? Like, do you what do you think about those? <laughs> I mean, they look a bit different. Yeah, and true. the CO two forcing is not that strong in the historical run yet. So, what do you think about that? Um, I still uh, I just, uh, this is still uh, work ongoing. I still haven't looked into it, uh, but yeah, I agree with uh, what you are telling. Like there are differences, and uh, so one thing we are trying to uh, uh, analyze is like taking the PI control and historic, like piecewise way. Like for an example, like this PI control, this runs for like around 400 years. Instead of like looking at the whole 400 years, like let's take like 50, 50, 50, or 100, 100, 100, taking a look at like why, whether there is a phase where this weakens or like strengthens, and we can do the same thing to historic, but we still haven't done that in the thing. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic work, Nish. Thank, Thank you. So. you.